Man, I got 100% on that, bro. <laughs> Amen. Huh? She does look like you. Unbelievable. What? Just kind of like me and Jenny, huh? And we got the curly-headed kid on the, a uh, young man on the back row. Say hello, Curly. Hello. Like look, don't even, poor little kid. <laughs> he looks like his daddy. Same height. Same, yeah. At 12, he's the same height as his daddy, and he's taller than Jenny. That's not My, fair. It ain't fair. <laughs> I'm the short one. It's good to have Miss Pat Ross with us today. Can you give her a hand? She's moved here, and she's with us, and it's good to have Amanda Ross with us. Give Amanda a hand. And I know that's James back there. Got the mustache and goatee. <laughs> James, Sonny, give him a hand. We sure appreciate y'all being here. God is so good. Let's remember Sharon and the babies. Madonna is with us, but Sharon is with the grandbabies today. And let's remember her in prayer. How's Mary? Mary's got uh, five stitches on the top of her gum, five on the bottom. She's a little bit in misery. Well, let's remember Mary in prayer that God will be with her, Miss Payne. We're going to get through all of this, and when everybody comes, we're going to have the largest crowd we ever have when everybody gets well. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God is so if everybody good. Everybody gets well and comes in. We got to circle that day on a calendar. Yeah, we're going to have to circle it. Yeah. Uh, I already know that Brother Bill Burns is going to be with us at least two or three days in uh, it uh, under the tent. Rusty Henley and his wife uh, from the Cowboy Church in San Antonio, Texas. I don't know if the uh, Cowboy Church is going to be with us. I've already been told that uh, I've got a promise, Brother Ron, from Brother Lee Cheryl, who is the owner of the new TV network out of Dallas, has told me that he's going to try to be there a couple of nights. Uh, Brother, uh, well, my Lord, Buford Dow is going to try to be with us. And the word's getting out and God is with us. We witnessed, Brother Ron, would you, would I be wrong to say that in that truck port that there's probably a thousand trucks uh, per day and a 24-hour pass through there? I've never seen anything like it. And... I'm convinced Jesus loves truck drivers. How about you? Amen. And I believe God is going to send in some people. Uh, the owner's brother met with us. We could not ask for anybody willing to be any nicer. He said, how can I help? What, what can we do? You just tell us. Amen? So I said, well, he said, put the tent where you want it. Electricity, water, whatever you want, it's here. But you're going to be able, when you come off of exit 44, off of 30, to Prescott, as soon as you get to that exit, Maryland, you're going to see the 10, ain't you? It's going to be sitting right there. I mean, God is putting it. They're not going to be able to miss it. Amen? We went over to the truck stop, and they're putting up some of the flyers. We went to a restaurant down the roadways. Walked in and had a couple of flyers with me and a man come walking down. I said, sir, and I'm talking to him, he said, I own this joint. And I said, oh, okay. And I told him about the tent meeting and he said, well, give me those flyers. He said, I've heard of you. And I said, you have? He said, Cowboy Church, Rock Springs. I said, you got it. He said, we attend the Cowboy Church in Gurdon. And he said, we're going to talk to our church band. So we got a great band to tell them, get out here and let's worship the Lord. That's what it's all about. Amen? I just want to see somebody saved by the precious blood of Jesus. I want to see somebody's sins gone. I want to see somebody's name brand new written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus is coming soon. Do you believe it? Yep. Amen. 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 If you can't see it now... You ain't ever going to see it. Amen? But remember Brother Bill Burns in prayer. Him and Paula are having to take care of his mom and dad who are really in bad health. 
and, uh, and the, Paul has taken care of another friend. They've just kind of devoted their time to three people who their mom and his mom and dad has Alzheimer's and different things, and they're getting up there in their 90s. And just remember them in prayer. Bill said, man, it's kind of hampered me some from being able to go out on the road and sing. He said, but Paul and I are making sure they're taken care of. And I believe there's a special reward in heaven for people who do that. Madonna, you and Sharon with your mother, I remember that so well. And you got a special special award in heaven. Amen. I was with Madonna and Sharon with their dad. I was with them with their mom. They was with us as far as Dolores. So we go back a ways, don't we? Amen. And I love and appreciate them so much. But God will bless you, Dean. I know the blessing. I know the patience. I know the gentleness, gentleness it takes when you have someone in your family that has dementia. And every day is a different day. Every moment is a different moment. I would be asked about ten times what is today. People could look at her and they didn't think nothing was wrong with her. At night, Marilyn, she became a little girl and you could call her Dolores. And to me, she'd say, I'm not Dolores. She'd say, excuse me. She'd say, I'm Maggie May. And that's the reason I wrote the song, Where Are You Maggie May? Because when darkness came upon the place, a little girl arrived. And she'd fuss with Jenny. And Jenny would fuss back and she'd say, oh man, tell her to leave me alone. Jenny became mom a lot of times, Betty. And it, it, it broke my heart. But thank God, God give us grace. We came through, amen. And I will say this, there was not one time that Dolores took chemo that I wasn't there. She couldn't drive. I took her. There wasn't a time at a doctor's appointment, doctor's office, she couldn't drive. I took her. We made sure we kept every appointment. Amen. And those nights, Jenny, we spent in, 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 in the ER. Wow. Do you realize, Madonna, that we spent in four years and one month, Betty, we spent 160 days in St. Joseph Hospital. That's in the room. But all together, Ron, we spent 250 days counting outpatient Willie. We were there. And Willie and Ann, I appreciate y'all so much. Willie and Ann had come up and asked us if we had anything to eat. We'd be up there. Jenny and I was there three to five times a day and we would have spent the night and the Lord said, go home, I can't sleep with y'all here. Said, yes, ma'am. But I look back across it as one of the most trying times of my life. But Diane, I thank God that God brought me through. God give me patience, Marilyn. I took some verbal beatings and cussings that Jenny can tell you, but I was able to walk away and come back. And she'd say, sit and say, why'd you go out there to the studio? I'd come out here and work a little bit. And I'd say, oh, I miss Jenny. would say, Mama, you wouldn't believe what you said to him. But you got to remember, when you've got dementia, when you've got Alzheimer's, you can't, you don't know what's happening sometimes, moment to moment. And she'd look at me, and Jenny would tell her what she said, and really she'd start crying. She'd say, you know I'd never say that about you, and I'd say, I know it. But Donnie, you just keep marching, don't you? And God help us that we remember and that we keep in mind Somebody asked me, my daughter asked me one day, she said, Daddy, why is it you never raise your voice to mom and she gets right in the middle of you? And I said, because I've asked God to give me the gentle and patience that I need in case at sometimes in my life I'm the guy that has the dementia. I pray that God lets somebody understand me, Marilyn. Amen. Had a lady in my church. She sang Betty. She wrote songs. And all of a sudden we noticed a change in her day. About 60 years old. And all of a sudden she would get mad at her husband doing the service and jump up and 
probably go to their house about a mile and a half away and he'd go chase her down because it was heavy traffic in Memphis. He came to me and he said, I don't know what's happening to the Harvey. And I said, well, you better find out. Well, found out she had the beginning of all time. My mother was in a nursing home there and they took care of her and I recommended that home because he got to where he couldn't take care of her. Well, after it really hit, about a year before she died, he bring he asked me, says it okay if I bring her to church? I said, You better bring her. And he brings Sister Melba, one of the most precious things I've ever seen in pastoring. Marilyn, I'd be a preacher. And Larry and Melba would sit back over on that side and have visitors. And all of a sudden, you hear this little voice back there. And Madonna, you start hearing, What a friend we have in G. Amazing grace. And those old songs. And people would turn around and look. And I'd say, Oh, y'all don't worry about that. Sister Melba praising the Lord. Even though she couldn't remember her name, she couldn't remember family members. When she came in the house of God, she could feel the spirit of the Almighty God. And she would praise him in her way. God let your word be so embedded in our hearts that even if, if we lose our memory, that we never forget who you are. Amen? Amen. That's the key to it. Yep. Amen? God is so good. Amen? Any other requests before we pray right now? Amen. Amen. We need to pray for the city of Hot Springs. He did that yesterday morning. Yes. And the National Park Police came out, ran them out, told them they didn't want him in front or around that area. That was out, literally. Amen. You know, I wonder how many more communities were trying to put Jesus out. That's it. It ain't that ain't putting Brother Skip out. It's putting Jesus out. That's right. Amen. This country has got to where it don't want Jesus. Okay. Amen. In spite of what's happening, and God has been with us. But if we forget Christ, the Bible said that every nation, every nation, about 170 nations in the world, but every nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. I don't know about you, but we've been seeing some previews of hell in Hawaii. That beautiful island and beautiful roads and homes just covered with that old black molten rock. It ain't something you can bulldoze and change. But that island, Madonna, will be changed forever. Mm. People said on the news the other day that they said, it's like a real picture of hell as you stand and look. Mm. My goodness. Stand, if you will. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Thank God, Ellen. Double? Well, that happens in Arkansas. <laughs> You're not a double sister, are you? <laughs> Amen. Brent, would you step up to that mic and lead us in prayer as we begin today? Father, we thank you for the word today. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for the many blessings that you bestow upon us, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Thank you. 
his family. He'd be here with us today, but let's remember him in prayer. The devil is fighting Brother Skip and that family unbelievable. Amen? Amen. But the Lord is with us. Amen? And to hear Brother Skip being put out of downtown, isn't it terrible? That man's carried that cross here for a long, long time. Amen. Get the green book. Green, green. I call it gray. Everybody calls it green. Amen. So get the green book and turn to 122. Amen. My mom used to leave this song. God's wanting to do something in your life. You got ready.
Man can fear your soul, and you will see. T'was best, Brother Ron, for God to have his way with you. Amen? I realized something the other day. I'm shaving and nick myself. You ever do that? You know? <laughs> How many ever does that? I almost didn't get it to stop bleeding on some of this medication, Brother Ron. But you know what I realized? Preachers bleed too. <laughs> Stubbed my toe the other night in the dark on one of them wheels on the bed. Now, I ain't done it. How I got so close, that thing, I don't know. You know how bad that hurt? Even preachers stub their toes and have to repent after that. Preachers steal peanuts too, don't they? Oh, <laughs> will you be quiet? Yeah, I got me. I was in CVS and they had dry roasted peanuts in big jars about that tall. Two for four dollars. I bought me two of them and I thought, well, I'm going to see how they are. Well, I got down to where one of them was empty and the other about half. I had them both up. One was salted, one unsalted. So I thought, well, I just poured them all together. Shake them up, mix them up, hey. So I got up the other morning and I, I usually wake up about 2 o'clock. I'm still doing that in Maryland since the Lord's been gone almost five years and I'm still waking up a day at the time that she would take her pain medicine. Still doing it. I don't know how long I'll continue to do it, Dane. But I got up and I got me something to drink and I got me, thought, well, I'm gonna eat me some in peanuts. So they're my peanuts, so I just, and I was doing that and I dozed off. And for some reason, in my dozing, I'm sitting on the couch, the peanuts went that away. <laughs> you would not believe how, how much floor about a third of a cup of peanuts can cover. That woke me up because I had peanuts normally where I wouldn't have them. All right, so I want to make sure we understood this correctly. You had two jars of nuts, right? Yes. And one was assaulted. Yes. <laughs> Only you. <laughs> God help me. <laughs> well, let's move on. I mean, that ended that story real quick, didn't it? Boy. How did you come up with that? Only you, Jimmy, I'm praying for you, son. This is your dad. <laughs> Turn to 111. That's one, one. One equals three, but don't turn to three, turn to one eleven. You may know this one. One eleven. You'll find out we do these old songs because we believe in them. The question in this song Have you been to Jesus? Cleansing power. Are you washed in blood? Lamb? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Question. Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you gone? Spotless or they white as snow Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Now are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Every only cross, the year is each moment in the crucified Are you washed in the blood? Say hello, brother Skip. 
another chance now, bud. Oh, 
thought that loud. You ever notice Pontiacs are gone? Oldsmobiles are gone. Plymouth is gone. And we have these cars with these weird foreign names now. Like a Ford. take turns praying and then mama would pray. My mama taught me how to pray. Amen. Daddy taught me how to serve the Lord and mama taught me how to pray. Amen. Thank God I learned how to pray as a little boy. Amen. All of my life, even when I wasn't in church, I never forgot to say the blessings of the meal before I'd eat after where I was. Didn't matter. Didn't care where I, where I was playing, what club, bar, whatever. If I started to eat something, Madonna, I'd say the blessing. People look at me like I was crazy. Amen. And I believe in that because that's what I was taught. Amen. You got one, Betty? Yeah, but I want, I have a question for you. Oh, my goodness. Okay, what? 
Have you written a song called Mama Taught Me How to Pray? If not, why not? <laughs> well, I guess I need to do that, Betty. I think you do. I'll put that on the agenda. All right. I think that would make a wonderful Amen. song. Amen. I, I like that, do. Betty. I really do yeah. because, I mean, I'm so glad I learned about Jesus at an early age. It sure solved a lot of questions in life as I got older. Amen. Some friends of mine I grew up with, Brother Ron, I've seen you kind of give a high sign on what Gail Riley, Gail and her husband Billy Riley Cook said. I remember we were just kids and Brother Riley got saved and he owned a generator, voltage regulator, battery shop in Memphis called Jabbo's Battery Service and he got saved. He had new cars, he had new Buick convertibles, and, but he had about five kids, and I grew up with those kids, and Gail was one of them. And then her husband, Billy Cook, we grew up together because her daddy was Reverend Willie Cook, who at 15 years old, I was playing in his bluegrass band. And Brother Willie was such a precious man. And Brother Willie came, was in the church in Willow Oaks when I took it in Memphis, and he was, he was my associate and backup preacher. He was in his 70s. But Gail said something that just blessed my heart. She said, you've always ministered with your daddy, saying, Brother Ron, I appreciated it so much. And she said, I'm so proud of you. And she said, Joe. She knew Dolores. And She's known Jenny since Jenny was a baby. Amen. She said, I'm so proud of y'all seeing you serve the Lord. I'm going to try to get them to come to this tent meeting. Billy is one great guitar picker, man. Billy Cook has been able to play guitar since he's four years old, kind of like you. We need one. <laughs> Madonna. You're making an impression as an aunt. A great aunt, aren't you? <laughs> Amen. I love that. How old is he? He's four. He's four. But he don't call you Madonna. He calls me Madonna. Madonna. Amen. <laughs> Bless Madonna, Lord. The Bible said, train a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they shall not depart. Years ago, the Catholic Church came out with a survey. And here's what it said. If we can have a child from the time that it begins to walk till it's seven years old, it will never be anything in life but a Catholic. Hello? I was working in airport services in Nashville and Huntsville, all those places. And we did a survey, baby. We had the 10 foot red carpet that we would throw out for every airplane that landed. Didn't matter if it's single engine, jet, didn't matter. And we figured out that the first 15 seconds that that, that aircraft had stopped on the tarmac and opened the door, that's when they made their decision whether or not they were going to come back. That red carpet, yeah. Didn't matter if it was Cessna 152, throw it. Because that guy may someday be flying a 747. They got to start somewhere. But we realized that in that short span, Willie, in 15 seconds, the passengers on board the airplane, the pilots, have made their decision, Madonna, whether or not they're going to come back and visit us again, Dean. Don't take long to make a decision, does it? 
that last forever. You're in business and your story. Amen. Uh, you know when people's coming out to really buy them when they're just coming to check you out. Amen. Folks just checking out, just let them. Just let them. Anything I can help you with, let me know. Just let them. Because they're going to make a decision. And when people come to church, they make a decision. And I hope today with our three visitors back there, Sonny and Miss Ross and Miss Ross, I hope that so far that we've been a blessing to you. Amen. And we want to be a blessing. Dean? Just I have a bit of testimony here. A few people here might know David Owens. I worked with him at the uh, rehab. David's a very religious person, and he would say a blessing at lunch. And rehab has uh, sits probably 100 students every 20 minutes on rotation during uh, lunchtime. Well, behind us, there was a group of kids sitting there, and out of respect, they would get silent. Well, David did a bunch of prayers. And it was something to see by, oh, I said by the end of the week, maybe a little more, that whole place would go silent for 30 seconds. Amen. It was, it was something. Whereas before, there was no such thing as, as a prayer. I'm like Amen. Amen. Diane, you've made how many more new bags? She's out of material. We need to get her some material. But, uh, Harry, you already passed out some bags, okay? Mm -hmm. Amelia, would you tell me about that bag? You said something about it this past week or something. Did I hear that? Her shoulder was having pain in her shoulder, and she laid it on her shoulder and prayed. Did it work? We've had too many testimonies of these bags. And Diane, when you get some more made, I'm going to send some to that TV station in Dallas. And I want them to ask me, well, what is this? Let's see if they can catch the scripture on it. We've seen too many miracles already, Dean. Amen. And Diane makes them, and Dean puts, Dean and Marion puts that nice logo on there. And the prayer cloths we pray over. Amen. The Bible said that Apostle Paul in the book of Acts that they sent out handkerchiefs and aprons that they prayed over and people were saved, healed, and delivered of those things. You remember one of the first ones give out? A lady had cancer, stage four cancer, and they didn't think there was any hope. And Dean, her grandson or son-in-law, wasn't it, took it to the house and he pinned the prayer cloth to her pillow and put the little bag, the, the sackcloth bag and ashes under her pillow. They went back to the doctor. What did he say, Dean? Cancer was gone. Amen. Hallelujah. It's not merely in that bag. It's in the faith. Amen. Faith without Diane. Can somebody say amen? 73? Amen. Since the first of the year, we've passed out seven, 73 miracles I know of. Amen? What do you do with yours? What do you do with yours? They, they keep them in their truck, basically, because it's for protection. I keep amen. mine under my pillow. You put yours under your pillow. I don't have one. Harold, Madonna don't have one. Uh-oh. Wow. Well, you... Don't let me forget, I'll find one under here for you. There may, there's probably one under here. And you may have to look and make sure there's not something in there that'll bite you. No. <laughs> it's been under there for almost a year. I thought I gave him one. <coughs> I didn't give one. Sure got one. Okay. I didn't give one. Well, we're going to get you one. Amen. I want you to make one just for Madonna. All right. Put, put Madonna on it, okay? <laughs> Madonna, yeah. Dean? Uh, on the note of prayers for Mama, the lady here found one in the green book on page 95. 95? Yes, my mother's prayer. Huh? I think it said my mother's prayer. Oh. I don't know if 
everybody knows that one. I don't know it, but I can sing another one about mom. How's that? that good. Would that work? Yeah. All right, what do you got? Let's do Victory in Jesus. Victory? Yeah. Thank you. 
Amen. Amen. Harry, you got your hat? Oh, you combed it. <laughs> Amen. I got that swept back look. The aloe vera look. Olive oil look. Olive oil look. Okay. Amen. As you give, you're giving to God, and I appreciate you giving. The offerings have been real small, and we've been trying to carry a real heavy burden. We need your help. So dig down deep and help us out, and God will bless you for it. And while we're doing this, where are you, Audrey? Right here. All right. Audrey's going to come and sing for us. This is Brother Ron's identical twin. This is Madonna. Does she look like Brother Ron? That's his granddaughter. She's just a lot prettier than him. Does that aloe vera keep you from going gray? Do what? Does it keep you from going gray, your aloe vera? <laughs> yeah, it keeps me from going gray. Thank you. I'm going to try it, Amen. Praise the Lord. Audrey... Brother Ron, we appreciate you bringing her to church with us. They called me yesterday, and I hear Audrey back there hollering at me. And I said, okay, y'all have been to the fish place. Because when Brother Ron gets with Audrey, they go to Long John Silver's in Little Rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this. Fish where you bite into it and grease comes out both sides of your mouth. <laughs> Lord have mercy. It lubricates everything, including the fish. Amen. <laughs> I'm getting a thumbs up back there. Somebody else like, anybody else like long johns? I wish there's a long johns here, but with the run, I was sitting there in long johns and I was sitting there eating and I'm going past the window after coming through the drive through I thought, why that Dodge truck really looks familiar? I've seen that somewhere. And then I seen his little hoist on the back of the truck. And I jumped up and it was him and this girl. And I ran out and said, what in the world are y'all doing here? We getting some of this fish? I'm telling you. I, how many times y'all go by the wrong? Oh, every time I'm in Little Rock, typically. <laughs> every time he's in Little Rock, amen. I love them cool glasses you got on there, kiddo. Thank you. So how old are you now? Thirteen. What grade are you in? I'm going into eighth grade. Wow. Did you hear that? My goodness. I mean, if you remember the eighth grade, not the 80th, the eighth. The eighth grade. I do, but I don't want to. <laughs> We love and appreciate you, Audrey. And we're so proud of, of your grandpa and Marilyn. We're so proud of them. They sure love Jesus. They sure love you, kiddo. Well, they can, they can, I can share their love with my two cousins, uh -huh. Caleb and JJ. There you go. You share that love, baby. That's right. You share the love. There's nothing like a family, man. Brother Ron, I know he's proud of you. Marilyn's proud of you. You, Marilyn, y'all favor. Y'all, y'all. I don't know. She might look more like Marilyn. <laughs> <laughs> they got the same hair. I mean, excuse me, Brother Ron. <laughs> okay, baby, go ahead. Harold, stand up. Harold. All right, everybody. Lord, we ask you to bless this offering and meet every need of Cowboy Church. You know our need, Lord. God, move and bless. Meet every need spiritually, physically, and financially in Jesus' name. Now, baby, you can go ahead. Right. Don't go nowhere, Brother Skip. You're going to sing off the phone? I hope it don't ring. I'll run in one answer. It's up to We're going to use the what? The ad. We're going to use the ad? I haven't had ads in years. I mean. <laughs> Did y'all see last week, last Friday, 
Did you know what last Friday was, Willie? Right, National Donut Week today. National Donut. And you could get free donuts at Kroger's. I didn't know until it was 6 o'clock in the evening. We're trying to get better while you're singing. That song is called Serial. It's hard for me to say the name, but Serial Day, something like that. Okay. Give her a hand. Isn't it great? We sure love you, kid. You never know someday of what she's going to do for the Lord. I'm so proud of you in church, girl. Can you tell her you're proud of her? Amen. We're proud Amen. of you, baby doll. Jimmy, I'm glad you're in church, man. Amen. 
Audrey's 13 and Jimmy's turned 12. And he's already the tallest member of his family. <laughs> Amen. I like what Helen said one time. Dean, that was you and those bikers in that park. And they come over and ask Helen and her family, there was about 90 of them over there, all of them short. And Dean remembered it. It was Dean, Helen. Somebody come over and ask them, was they having a midget convention? <laughs> when I'm tall, don't I see? And the waves cover me. And the black clouds won't let the sun shine through. Then a voice seems to say, Shall there be a brighter day? Don't allow the storm to hide sweet heaven's view. Cause you've got one more valley, one more hill. Maybe one more trial, one more deal. One more curve in life's road. Maybe one more mile to go. You can lay down your heavy load. You get home.
start paper about painting. I told Brother Skip A and I'm in G. Brother Willie Cook used to sing this one, and he'd get happy and he was about six foot three and slender and tall, wasn't he, Jenny? He'd get happy and he'd sing this and he'd duck walk across the stage with that Martin guitar like that. What was his name? Like Chuck Berry. Church had come down, but the Willie got to duck walking. There are some things I may not know. There are some places I can't go, but I'm sure all this one thing, my God is real, for I can
Hardy. Piano, or, or the organist. He preached for us in Cowboy Church. Gene Hardy. I was his associate pastor when I was 19 years old in East St. Louis, Illinois. How many ever been to East St. Louis? Uh, when you go to East St. Louis, you better make sure your windows are rolled up, your doors are locked. Don't look either way. Run a red light if you have to. Meanest place I have ever been in my life, Willie. Really. They look for tourists who are lost so they can make a little money on them. But we had an older black lady in the church that she'd want to sing. And she sang a song that I could not get to beat to. So Brother Hardy and I were over to church one day and he said, okay, well, get your guitar. I'm fixing to teach you the rhythm to that song. I couldn't get it. The reason I couldn't get it is it was one straight beat. And that old woman could sing that and tear the house smack that down. Here we go. <laughs>
find some clues to the jury. Did you say amen to this song? Amen. In this old world of curly mold. Missouri. My three older sisters were born in Missouri. For some reason, Daddy got on the railroad in Memphis and moved down there, and I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, the home of Elvis and Jerry Lee Lewis and B.B. King. Yeah, God let me be from Memphis. Amen. I don't understand all that God does. But I had no choice in who my parents would be. Brother Ron, I don't know if you noticed, but Gail called me Junior. A lot of people don't know. Junior is what I was called as a child because I'm Harvey Junior. Amen. I was Junior or JR. So anytime you see somebody call me Junior, you know them folks. They've known me a long, long time. Amen. Because the journey is great, 2 Kings chapter 19, the prophet of the Lord has come into a place. Love you, Brother Skip. The prophet of the Lord has come into a place to where his life is threatened. You ever had your life threatened? Yes. Have you? I don't think we'll know until we get to heaven how many times we personally have faced and been in the vicinity, the vicinity Madonna, of the angel of death. I think when we see hell and how many times we've been there, we're going to be amazed at how we got through, King. Amen. 
Sometimes we don't realize, Amelia, that danger is lurking outside of a door. We never know it. I mean, if you've ever been in a situation that you found out afterwards and you thought, wow. Uh-huh. Yeah. That Waffle House in Nashville, Tennessee, a few weeks ago, that the gunman killed those people in, was within two miles of my house in Nashville, Tennessee on Bell Road. After everybody got to the Grand Ole Opry pickers and all that, but not a we'd go there and get us some breakfast and drink coffee. They ain't upset in that place a hundred times probably. And when I saw it, I thought, boy, that looks familiar. And I realized it was right there at Old Hickory Mall, Bell Road, Nashville, Tennessee. Now, nobody would have even considered going in there, Brother Ron, with a high-powered rifle and a pistol, <coughs> and killing those people at about 2.30 or 3 in the morning because a lot of them were musicians and pickers winding down from... But a guy from a different state wasn't even from there. Somewhere in Illinois, I believe, when he brother Ron and he left and he got his guns that his he had jumped the fence of the Capitol. Same guy. Well, decided he gonna talk to Donald Trump. Well, his daddy took possessions of the gun. His guns. And somehow he got them again. Okay? His daddy didn't know he'd got in and got them, will he? Until his daddy heard on the news. His daddy didn't even know where he was at. But he went with one, mind, one thing in mind, Dean. And that was to kill some human beings. To make a name for himself. Isn't that amazing? The devil has it today in our society that you can get recognition and notoriety by killing folks in schools. And our politicians automatically blame the gun. Gary Paxton wrote a song a few years ago, one of me recorded, called it Ain't the Guns. A bullet never jumped in a chamber. A trigger never pulled itself. It takes the thought of a human yeah, it ain't the guns. It's the spirit that's in our world. How many of you got a gun that you ain't fired in 10 years laying somewhere? I've got a shotgun that ain't been fired and I know probably six or seven years. Probably need to get it out and clean it and see if it still works, will it? But that gun does not bother anyone that comes in my house or comes on my property. See? It's never fired by itself. But you put something in there and you pull that trigger and it's going to fire. Because it's created by man to do that. It ain't the guns. It's the hearts of human beings. We have made it. You can become rock star status, Madonna, in a matter of an hour by going in Betty and killing students in school. And all that. Isn't that ridiculous? The man of God, Elijah the prophet, chapter 19, he flees from his life from Jezebel. And Ahab told, Ahab was king, the husband of Jezebel, told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all how he had slain all the prophets of Baal with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, So let the gods, she didn't say God, Marilyn, So let the gods do to me, and more also, If I make not thine life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. She said, I'm going to have you killed. 
you ain't going to live. After tomorrow evening, you're not going to see another sunrise. You're not going to see the moon in the sky. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. The man of God that has caused it to stop raining for three and a half years. The man of God that has literally worked miracles and the waters parted for him. is running from a threat on his life. You ever been threatened? Has anybody ever been threatened? How does it feel? Isn't that a terrible place to be? Because sometimes you don't know who it is that's threatening you. I mean, it's terrible to have a threatening phone call or a letter in the mail and, and you don't have any idea who's doing that. And you don't know why. So he got up and he ran for his life and he came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and he left his servants there. He knew that if his servant was with him, which was Elisha, Adonah, he'd be killed too. So he split up. Because they wasn't after his servant, they were after him. And he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. God, why don't you just go ahead and take me? They're looking for me. They're going to kill me. Why don't you just... Go ahead and kill me so I can go on the glory. How many of you have ever asked God to go ahead and take you? Aren't you glad he didn't? he got something else for you. Brother Ron, God's going to let us know when he's finished with us. He ain't through with us yet. Amen. I've never had the devil fight anything as hard as the last few months that he's fought Cowboy Church and that tent that's fixing to go to Prescott. I have never in all of my life seen the demonic powers of hell try to stop everything, Dean, every way, just totally tied up and make us think it ain't going to work. Now, now, and now why I'm saying that, if anybody would like to possibly donate to Harvey Purdue Ministries for this meeting, we got to get advertising. We got to get different things. We got to secure a trailer, which I'm believing God tomorrow's going to happen. Amen. So pray if God speaks to your heart to help us out. We we can use that money to advertise with. Amen. Amelia, he ran for his life, and he requested that God take his life, and he said, "It is enough now, Lord. I've been through enough, Lord." I mean, I mean I, I, I've been through enough, Lord. Oh, Lord, take away from my life, for am I better than my fathers? You let my fathers die, so go ahead. I'm at a place, Lord, they're going to kill me anyway, so go ahead and kill me. That song Garth Brooks recorded is probably more biblical than a lot of the songs and songbooks. It said, sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. What if God had answered every prayer you would have prayed? And there'd be some people be dead. Quite a few. <laughs> like me? No, quite a few. Qu oh, it, it, now this is coming from one of the most sweet, precious ladies <laughs> that I know, and she says quite a few. Harold, I hope you're not in that. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you have ever said, God, won't you just kill them? I can remember growing up in Pentecost churches. Somebody was lost. They'd say, God, you bring them in or kill them. No wonder folks were scared of Pentecost. You're taking a chance on your life. Amen. I've seen them in the altar get people in the altar and get you so confused. One of them be on one side and slapping and praying for you and say, come on, turn loose. And another one on the other side be slapping and saying, hang on. How do you turn loose and hang on at the same time? It's kind of hard to do. But listen to this. 
And he lay and slept under a juniper tree. I, how many knows what a juniper tree is? Well, we got a few folks know what a jun juniper is. I don't. I, I don't recall seeing them. Probably have. It's a tree that has junipers. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say that a little louder? I said it's a tree that grows junipers. How <laughs> I many has ever ate a juniper? Did it bite you back? No. Okay. <laughs> and he lay and slept under a juniper tree, and behold, an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Now, in the middle of nowhere, there ain't no McDonald's. There ain't no Burger King. Brother Ron, I'm sorry to tell you, but they ain't no Long John Silvers. Out in the middle of the wilderness. If you're going to eat fish, you're going to have to catch it. If you're going to cook it, you're going to... But the angel awakes him and says, Arise and eat. Well, what's he going to eat? Junipers, isn't he? Huh? He's going to eat junipers. He's going to eat junipers. <laughs> and he looked, and behold, there was a cake, Helen, oh, okay. baked on the coals. There wasn't any mixing bowls. There wasn't any flour. There wasn't any yeast. But there was a cake that was baked. Now listen to this, Harry. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the, on the coals and a cruise of oil at his head, and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Eat, get full, go back to sleep. I'm out here under this juniper tree. I think I'm safe. Nobody knows where I'm at. Now, notice this. And the angel of the Lord came unto him a second time. Say with me, second time. Second time. And touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meal. Now, if all of these diet companies could figure this one out, they, would, they could triple their sales everywhere. Because then he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meal 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mountain of God. Because the journey is great. When I... Hold up this book. What do you see? You see the Word of God. What else you see? Highlights. Huh? Highlights. Highlights. <laughs> All the yellow marks. My Bible. I, I, I couldn't preach in this Bible in Mexico. Because if I took this Bible to Mexico, they ain't going to believe me because it's highlighted. You have to take a Bible that's never been highlighted. But what I'm holding in front of you right now is a loaf of heavenly bread. The bread of life. Now this just wasn't somebody dropping around with a catering service in one of those roach coach trucks. I mean, remember when roach coach trucks used to come by? You know, you'd, you'd get something to eat and you'd have to maybe pick something out and you look and it had brown had wings. Sometimes it even had feet. Sometimes you thought it was a little bit of those Sprinkles. We call them roach coaches. They used to come by the airport every day. Roach coach. Sometimes it was good. Sometimes it had been there a few days. He's going to get rid of everything on that truck now. Because he's got to make some money. But there was a cake, Madonna, baking on the coals in the middle of nowhere. And he did even know there was a visitor there. God sent an angel and said, go down take care of that preacher that's running for his life. He's going to need some fuel for 40 long days. I mean, you ladies would like to be able to eat a cake and water two times 
have enough strength to last you 40 days. Do you realize how much weight I could lose in 40 days but not eating? Now, he, is, he ends up at the mountain of God because the angel said, take and eat, take and eat, because the journey is great. It, it's a long ways. You're going to have to have the strength to go. In the word of God, if you will take and eat of the word of God and of the breath of the bread of life, the Holy Ghost will give you the strength that you need to go from place to place. He shall lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen? Amen. Say with me strength. Do you believe the Lord can give you strength? Yes. Do, you, do you believe you can rest in the Holy Ghost? Yes. Amen. The prophet of the Lord needed something deemed that was more than being cooked in mama's kitchen. He needed something more, Marilyn, than just something you can buy at Kroger's and Walmart. He needed the strength of the Lord himself, and I believe it was the same bread that Israel went out and gathered early in the morning and it was called manna from heaven. Amen? Amen. The journey's great. Now, I don't know if you realize it or not, but really the devil don't want this tent set up anywhere anymore. He'd like to see it sit right there and rot down because he knows that if that tent goes to Prescott, Arkansas, somebody there is going to be touched by the word of God and by the power of, uh, and lives are going to be changed. Amen. I don't know why I'm going there, but there's somebody there, Madonna, that God's already put in his sights and God's going to get them. The journey is great. Do you see your journey? Brother Ron, a year ago, your journey changed. Brother Ron was in good health. He was doing good. We'd done the documentary, and he was having fun. Uh, they, even com they compared him to the big Laskowski or somebody, Pascal, whoever it was. Amen. But Brother Ron's life changed. And last year, Madonna... He had a heart attack and it has changed his life completely. Brother Ron, did you realize the journey was going to be so tough? How many in the last year your journey has changed and it's a lot tougher than it was before? Well, I'm here to tell you that the Holy Ghost, the Word of God, is greater than anything that you can get when you get down in the dumps, Madonna, pay, take your Bible and open it up and say, Lord, I need something from the Word of God. The other day I was praying and I said, God, I need you to give me an answer. And God spoke to me a verse of scripture and I opened it up and it said, enlarge your tent. Wait a minute, Lord. Said, so let down the curtains. Stretch them out and enlarge the tent. God was telling Israel that because he said, I want to enlarge who you are. I want to enlarge what I'm doing with you. I want to bless you. Say, bless me. Bless me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Say it again. Bless me. In Jesus' name. Say it again. In Jesus' name. Is it that simple? I'm sure it is. Strength for the journey. Madonna, things are changing, aren't they? But Madonna, he hadn't left you. He hasn't forsaken you. He still loves you just like he did when you was a little girl. Run around in Daisy. Not Daisy Duke, Daisy Arkansas. Amen. Amen. Strength for the journey. Helen, has your journey changed? Amelia, has your journey changed? Amen. Willie, has your journey changed? Amen. I realize things now 
Dean, we're going to have to get that door sweep over there. I realize putting that door sweep down, things ain't like they were five years ago. I could roll around on this concrete and jump up and down, and it gets harder to get up and down now, does it? Yep. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. I guess these old knees have carried extra weight so long that they're like old tires getting flat spots in them, and finally, if we don't care for they'll blow out. That means they've been riding down the road about 70 miles an hour in a front tire blow. It sure gets your attention. I had a Volkswagen Jetta, a brand new car. Had about 12,000 miles on it. And Brandon, I was going down 55 Highway out of Memphis, going down to a radio station, turning into Mississippi, and I'm sitting on about 80, me and my red Jetta. Had them little Goodyear Eagle wide tires, low profile. But then I heard something go, <laughs> And it was all I could do to hold that steering wheel above the wrong. I slowed down real quick. Thank God I got over on the shoulder. And you know what was wrong that time? It was a recall tire. Nobody told me. One of those Goodyear Eagles, low profile, got the least bit low of air. They would blow the sidewall out. 80 miles an hour. Now you say, well, you was breaking the law and you were sinning. Yeah, I was. But thank God, his mercy and grace, he's seen me through. Amen? So I took them stupid Goodyear low profile, good looking tires, Goodyear Eagle. Took them off that thing and I put a set of Cooper radios on it. It drove better. Didn't have to worry about it no more. Strength for your journey. Oh, Marilyn, the last 10 years has your journey changed? Huh? 10 years ago, you didn't know that Leah was going to face what she's faced. Amen. Harold, has your journey changed in 10 years? Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Jenny, how about the journey? Has it changed? Brent, has your journey changed? I seen several, as we were saying, if I could hear my mother pray again, I seen several wiping tears. I never dreamed that my daughter, at 29 years old, would be missing her mother, Madonna, for almost five years. We didn't know that. We, we couldn't know, could we? But our journey has changed drastically. Amen? Betty, your journey has changed drastically. Amen? Betty, your journey has changed a lot, hasn't it, my brother? Yeah. And you know the thing about it is I wake up now and sometimes I have to stop and look and wonder, Madonna, is this my day? Am I supposed to be here? You ever wonder that? Wait a minute, God, where are you? What is this fair? Fair? Diane, has your life changed drastically in 10 years? If we could only understand what is laying tomorrow. Amen. If you knew tomorrow was going to be a bad day, and you could figure out a way around it, would you? How many days, Madonna, of pain have you? Wasn't planning on happening. But all of a sudden, you woke up and it was there. Amen? There's one thing that I have to keep in mind and remember. In spite of those days, granting your days change all the time, don't they? Amen? I have to remember there's one thing that don't change. Amen. That strength for the journey really is Jesus said. Say with me right now. Jesus said. Jesus said I will never leave you. 
I will never forsake you. I, I will be with you always to the ends of the earth. Stand with me right now. Hallelujah. You know, I realize that 10 years ago, what did Jimmy look like, friend, 10 years ago? Yeah, he, he was wearing different kind of clothes. Ron, how about Audrey 10 years ago? How about you 10 years ago? I was going through some pictures the other day, Madonna, and I found some pictures of when we were shooting the television pilot. And you and Sharon were doing the makeup and the hair and all of that. And I was looking at someone, I was looking at you and looking at Sharon. And you can tell it's you. And you ain't changed near, near as much as some of us have. <laughs> My hair was blonde, and it wasn't from a color reader. Everybody tells me it's white now. <laughs> but then they tell me white hair is a sign of wisdom. Well, maybe I am getting smarter. I don't know. I'm getting to where I can't remember if I am or not. Amen. There's something wonderful about getting over 60 is you have a right to not remember. That don't work if you miss work. <laughs> <laughs> Dean, you have a right to forget what Marianne said yesterday and she can remind you. Oh, yeah, she does. And she does. <laughs> Willie, really, you have a right to say, well, you know, I forgot all about that. He don't ever do that, does he, Ann? <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> Helen, do you ever forget anything? Every day. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> I have to stop sometimes and think, well, what am I going to do next? You ever had your wallet in your pocket and be looking for it? strength for my journey. The prophet had to have strength physically, spiritually, and his needs had to be met. And in that cake, he ate up twice. And in that cruise of that heavenly water, Brother Ron, there was everything that he needed for 40 days. Little is much, and God is in it. I was reminded as I read that, Betty, about the two widow women that came to the prophet. And one said, my sons are going to be, my husband died, and he was a prophet. And my sons are going to be sold for slaves. And the prophet said, what do you got in your house? And she said, all I got is a cruise of oil. That's all I got. Got some cooking oil. The prophet said, well, send your boys out and borrow as many vessels as you can find. Get all of them. And y'all go in behind closed doors and you begin to pour from that cruise of oil. And the Bible said that she began to pour Maryland every vessel that was brought to her. It was full of oil. And Madonna, when she got through, she looked at it. And Diane, the oil stayed. The Bible says that her sons went out through the country, Dean selling the oil. And they had a, more than enough to pay their bills. They, the, her sons didn't go into slavery. They were free. And the Bible said that she had enough money, Willie, to live comfortably for the rest of her life. I'm reminded of another widow woman that there was a famine in Samaria. And the prophet of the Lord went by her house and knocked on the door. And he looked at her and he said, uh, what are you doing? She said, I'm fixing to bake a cake. I got enough flour and oil for one cake and I'm going to bake it. Me and my son are going to eat it and die. 
He said, won't you bake me the cake first? That greedy preacher. And she said, huh? He said, bake me the cake first. Now you can't get flour and you can't get oil in Samaria because there's a famine. They're eating donkey heads. They're debating on eating each other's kids because it's so bad. And the Bible said, she said, okay. And she goes in and mixes the meal and bakes the prophet the last cake. But the last cake, Diane was really the first cake. Say with me, last cake is really the first. Because Maryland, the Bible said when she baked the prophet a cake, that the meal barrel stayed and the cruise of oil never diminished and her and her sons ate cake and had oil to cook with when everybody else in the city was dying. God's way. Strength for the journey. Amen. What's God saying today? Number one, be not weary in well-doing. Keep trying. Sister Ross, my God shall supply all of your needs. Amen. Marilyn, step over there beside her. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, Sister Ross, God sent you here today because as you and Marilyn join hands, the healing virtue of Jesus Christ is going to go through your body. How many believes God's a healer? Jenny, step up there behind them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Ron? Brother Ron? Brother Ron? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's okay. Harold, Dane, why don't you go to stand behind this, our visitor brother right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You, you stand behind her. Now, God sent y'all here today because y'all had needs. Amen. How many of you believe God can supply the need? Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. My brother, I see better transportation for one thing. Okay? God knows, don't he? Young lady, I see God doing something totally, uniquely different. Amen. God has got some money coming to you that you're going to get. It's yours. Okay? And also, raise your hand for healing. Amen. Okay, my brother, raise your hand. Amen. Now, as we pray, everybody stretch your hand out. As we pray, amen, Praise him. Audrey, come over here and take and lay your hands on Grandpa. Come here, baby. Now, Audrey, I want you to pray the Lord heals your Grandpa Ron Harrison, okay? Love you, Madonna. Amen. God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I thank you for strength for the journey. God, my sister Ross, I want you to heal her as Marilyn and Jenny lay their hands on her in Jesus' name. My sister Ross, as Dean lays his hands upon her. Dean, just lay your hand right here on my forehead. There you go. And Dean, I want you to ask the Lord in Jesus' name to meet her every need spiritually, physically, and financially. Harold, in Jesus' name, ask the Lord right now to meet our brother's needs and to come through and to stop the devour that would come against him in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, Willie, I rebuke the devourer. I rebuke the devil that has decided he's going to come against you and Ann in that building down there. Now, in, Willie and Ann, in Jesus' name, I rebuke it. I want it turned. I want it changed. I want God to get in the middle of that and turn the entire situation. Do you hear me? Amen. I want you to raise your hand with me right now and say, God, you're going to change that situation on Willie and Ann's building in Jesus' name. There's no reason for y'all to have to worry about that anymore, Willie. There's no reason for y'all to have to lose sleep over it in time. God, intervene and stop the demonic powers of hell that would come against them on that building in Jesus' name. God, meet Diane's every need, meet Helen's need, meet Amelia's need and Betty's in Jesus' name, Lynn and Harold, praise the Lord, Dean and Mary Ann, glory to God. God, as Audrey lays her hands upon her grandpa, Audrey, say with me right now, Jesus, I ask you to heal my grandpa from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Heal him so he don't need oxygen. Heal him completely, Lord. And everybody said with Audrey, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jimmy, step back there and take Jimmy by the hand. Praise the Lord. God, we love this guy, Lord. We ask you to bless Jimmy in every way. Work out everything for him, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Helen, I know in whom I believe that he's able to keep. That's what I put in his hands and I give to him. In Jesus' name. Brother Ron, why don't you raise your hands right now? Why don't you look at Audrey and say, baby, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. Sister Ross, things are going to get better tomorrow. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place right now. Do you feel the presence of the Lord right now? Before we go, can you just lift up your hand and say, Jesus, thank you for your sweet presence. Thank you, Lord, for what I feel in my soul. God, I don't know how you're going to do everything. Willie, I don't guess we're supposed to understand that. We just let him do it. I believe, Willie, before you and I get through on that building, God's going to take care of it, and y'all going to get extra money for the time that y'all spent like you have. Do you hear me? Brother Ron, I believe God's going to provide for you in every way. Marilyn, I believe God's going to make way for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Audrey, do you believe what you pray? What do you believe God did when you prayed? I, I that I Hallelujah. The Bible said that we've got to become as a little child. Childlike faith. Amen. You believe God healed your grandpa? Amen. Well, raise your hand, baby, and say, thank you, Jesus, for healing my grandpa. Now, that's what it's all about right there, folks. Praise the Lord. God, keep us, protect us, meet our needs. Bless our people, Lord. Bless our visitors today and meet every need in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Shake their hand. Don't forget, Wednesday night. 7 o'clock, bluegrass Bible study. We get the banjo out. And you ain't going to believe this rascal back here on that guitar. Amen. I love every one of you. God bless you. I'll be so good to have you, Jimmy. So good to have you, Sister Ross.